Hey everybody, it's Dr. Rick dropping in on you. Hope everybody had a great week. I hope everything uh, moved along as planned or you at least experienced some progress. But I can tell you, having talked and shared with friends, colleagues, family, uh, and some clients, there are some people who experience some setbacks, some resistance, some things of that nature. And my advice to each one of them was, you're still breathing, you're still in the fight. That's something that you have to understand in this life, no matter where you're at. If you're fighting that battle uh, on an individual level, trying to achieve something, if you're fighting it on a community level, if you're fighting for your family and with your family to get something done or accomplished that benefits the family, if you're fighting as a community, as a race or as a nation, look, it's going to take you being consistently committed to what it is you're trying to do. Uh, the idea that life is fair is a lie that is often easily accepted by people who are lazy uh, and unpurposed. That lie that life is unfair will get you to sit down and just accept anything that comes your way. The truth is life returns to you what you invest in it. It doesn't always come when you think it should. It doesn't always come from where you believe it should. It doesn't always come back through the place you placed it. But the law of the universal law of reciprocity is uh, unfailing. It has not, uh, and just because you don't see it, have, we love to want to see somebody get their quote unquote karma. Just because you don't see it happening doesn't mean that it didn't. Uh, and also the good coming back uh, in the lives of people doesn't always come for you to see and experience along with them or observe them getting, but it comes. And you have to trust and believe that what you're planning through your thoughts, your thoughts are the seeds of your destiny and what you are planting will return to you. Uh, so what I want to talk to you guys about today, you know, the you know, the routine. If you like what you hear, click the like button. If you um, like it a lot, share it. If you really like it, subscribe. It's real simple. If you believe in the work I've done for the black community uh, on an individual level for individuals as a community, uh, the work I've done in research, program development, community advocacy, uh, academic advocacy, uh, advocacy on behalf of mental health and uh, domestic violence and abuse and so many other things over the course of 30 years. You've, in many instances, a lot of you have come to me at one point or another. Uh, if you believe in that, uh, look in the description box and see how you can donate and give. The one thing we don't do with any consistency is give. What we don't do is back our pro-blackness with resource. We are horrible at it. Uh, but that's not why I'm here to talk about. Uh, but definitely support us. Now, what I do for a living is basically performance psychology and what norm, what admit, eventually started out as a behavioral study for me in my early years, you know, primarily focused on cognitive therapy, behavioral therapy, which is now cognitive behavioral therapy, uh, looking at things in that line. I moved up uh, into the fields of neuro-linguistic programming, neuro-associative conditioning, embodied cognition, psycho-cybernetics, uh, and then ultimately into the world of quantum physics, quantum reality, quantum theory, on and on and on. Uh, so if I were to really truly be categorized, and I don't like being categorized, I'm flowing, I'm growing, I'm developing, and there's no box really to be contained in when you're trying to establish yourself and grow yourself for the purpose of doing the things you think you're designed to do. And that's not just for me. Uh, I tell people all the time, I'm not special. I, and no one in this world is more special than anyone else. Some people are just pushing their potential. They are accessing and actualizing their potential. And some aren't. And there are the varying degrees at which people are uh, actualizing and actual, I mean, activating, accessing, activating, and actualizing their potential. Uh, but what I will tell you is I go all out. But anyway, in the field of that, I developed over the years uh, a 
an immense appreciation and understanding of how the mind works. And probably about 15 years ago, I conducted a study uh, within the black community on cognitive uh, bias theory and cognitive dominant bias theory, uh, which says that we have a cognitive bias as it pertains to what we can and cannot do as a collective. We associate our, uh, our blackness with limitations versus possibilities. We search the history of our ancestors. We search our own experiences and we uh, view the discriminatory practices, the racial caste system, uh, the uh, school to prison pipeline, mass incarceration, uh, miseducation, and all these different things that we've experienced, redlining, benign neglect, black codes, uh, uh, reconstruction and so many other things that we experience that we can put our hands on that we can say are literally policy related statute related cultural uh, culturally ingrained and a part of this nation's fabric and it's all uh, anti-black and we could say that on a factual level we could search out and identify these and we could literally measure them and compare them to other groups and see how it disproportionately impacts us in a negative way. We can absolutely do that. But when we do that, and that is our focus, whatever you focus on, you feel. One of the things I teach my clients all the time, whatever you focus on, you feel. So whatever you give the most attention to, you give the most power to. So if my power, if I'm giving my power, if or if I'm applying power to the things that oppress me, I am more easily oppressed. When I apply my energy towards searching for solutions, I liberate myself because where I search, I find. There is nothing that there isn't a solution to. There's nothing that can't be overcome. There's nothing that can't be conquered. Uh, one of the disagreements that Dr. Anderson and I had back in 2014 when I was building the blueprint for black empowerment. Uh, if you want to see it, it's on... Um, the Odyssey Project's website. That link is in the description box. You can go there and check the resource tab and it'll drop down and one of the resources is the Blueprint 1.0. Uh, I am currently working on the Blueprint 2.0. Um, but anyway, one of the, one of the dis matter of fact, the only disagreement because I called him for his blessing, his advice. And uh, one of the things he and his wife, Joanne, first of all, thank me for is how I acknowledged all the people who triggered my thinking, who were precursors to my explorations, and that included him. Uh, I gave credit where credit is due. I'm simply expanding on ideas. Uh, and the only thing we disagreed on was that he believed if we did not come together as a unit and function as a unit, operate as an economic body and create agendas and policies and protocols, by 2013, we will become a permanent underclass. Uh, I disagreed and I disagree not because the math didn't say so, because the math absolutely said so. I disagree because I don't believe in impossibility. I don't believe there's no place you can be that you can't come back from. Now, there'll be those that'll argue about it, but what I've seen in my life, what I've practiced, what I've studied is the mind simply hasn't explored all the possibilities because we are trained to see the limitations. We see what we can't do first. And those limitations govern what we try. And that what and then what we try produces the results what what then reinforces the presumption that we had in the first place of what we could do and we simply complete the we can uh, complete the cycle over and over again. And that's what we've done as a race is that we have uh, bought into the limitations and, 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 and uh, low expectations that that are set out there for us we've bought into the narratives about who we are and what we aren't and we simply operate within those confines every now and then acknowledging when someone is able to break through but never truly realizing if they can break through we can break through too because we can always find the one reason why they were able to do it and we weren't and we literally look for that we are programmed to make excuses and it is time out for the excuses. It's time out for sitting around thinking we can't. We are remarkable. We are exceptional. We are extraordinary. We are creators. We are the rhythmic people and that we are special in. We have a unique ability to 
receive rhythmic patterns and information and consciousness um, from God, the universe, the universal consciousness, whatever you want to call it. We have that capacity at an immensely high level. It's innately within us. It's there at birth. And it and our creativity is a part of that. Our ability to explore our imaginations are a part of that. But we have learned how to dwarf our visions, dwarf our goals, dwarf uh, our expectations, and lower our standards to live inside of a box that someone else created for us. It is now time for us to step outside of that box. It's now time for us to explore outside of these cognitive biases that we have developed over time that govern what we expect out of life, what we demand out of ourselves, what we express to our children and ask of them. It's time to go deeper. It's time to search at a greater depth for the things that are there. The solutions are there. The answers are there. The vision is there. The direction is there. The formulas are there. We can create something and we can be uh, liber liberated. We can be autonomous. We can be powerful. We can make our presence fail. We can push back when people push against us, but it comes with us being willing to search out uh, what's out there and look for the solutions and believe in ourselves and hold ourselves accountable and to search the minds of those who are willing to open and illuminate things we don't understand. We've got to stop uh, resisting change, resisting knowledge, resisting uh, information that is at the core and the bedrock of our transition and our transformation and our, our growth and our empowerment. Look, I am not going to keep you any longer, but I had to talk about that. I had to express that. I had to uh, explore that. So look, on that note, I am going to step out of here, get inside, light up me a stick and talk noise. Uh, man, you know, March Madness. But I had to do that. Look, if you believe in the work we do, we have a lot more research to do. Right now I'm doing research on mental health, uh, resource access, uh, as, especially as it pertains to black men, how to break the, uh, uh, the uh, stigma and so much more, but also how to gain access to help that isn't readily available to our men and ultimately leads to a large number of them becoming incarcerated versus getting the help they need. And so I need to get your help on that research. Uh, research the average, I mean, small research projects start at about $30,000 to $50,000. Research isn't cheap. For years, I funded the uh, research at the Odyssey Project. Um, but I, I, again, I could always use help because I really want to take this deep. I want to create networks of resources in every area. I want to take black men lead on a more expansive network across the nation so that we are raising up young boys universally on what it means to be a man. And we are uh, developing young girls to be uh, aware of themselves and to see the beauty in themselves and not to be chasing uh, Eurocentric ideas and other expectations that don't apply to them knowing the beauty within themselves. Self-identity is so important and we are in the midst of an identity crisis. All these things need to be addressed and all these things require resources. But on that note, I'm getting out of here. I want to thank you guys for all the love and sharing and, wait and, and giving me your time today. You guys have an unbelievable remainder of your day and weekend and we'll talk soon. I'm out.